welcome to day 97. Today is day 97. My name is Gertrude Jaressa Payne. If today happens to be your first time of watching any of our videos, this is DP Global Ministries and this is part of our prayer marathon which we started on the 1st of September and is due to run to the 9th of December 2020. Welcome aboard. Do join us. Please subscribe to our channel and whenever we've got a number of programs coming up so that and set up your notification um, as well so that whenever we we put together a program you can be able to to hear about it thank you very much for joining me this morning i want to speak to the regulars i thank god for your life and i bless god for what he's doing in your life this season may you be richly blessed in jesus mighty name now let us enter into a time of worship we enter into a time of worship right now and begin to give our god praise this morning i am so grateful that i'm alive i am so thankful that I am alive. I'm so thankful that like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that went through the fire, God was the fourth person there with them. And I believe that we have gone through some dark times and some difficult times, some happy times, some sad times, but God has remained with us. He's remained faithful and he continues to make a way for us where there seems to be no way. God be blessed. May your name be blessed. May your name be blessed. Jeremiah chapter 12. 20 verse 13 says sing to the Lord give praise to the Lord he rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked father you have rescued me from the hands of the wicked you have rescued me from the hands of my enemies you have rescued me from all manners of chastisement and all manners of problems in Psalm 75 verse 1 it says that we praise you God and we praise you for your name is your name is near people tell of your wondrous deeds Father, you are a wonderful God. You are an amazing Father. And I thank you that you continue to terrify the enemy. I thank you, Lord, that you continue to terrify all my enemies. And I thank you, Lord, most of all, that I'm awake this day, that I'm a part of this day. And I just want to exalt you and thank you very much for what you were doing in my life and what you've been doing in the life of your children for the last 96 days. Today is day 97. And I've been believe that you've been doing a lot of wonderful things. Thank you for the testimonies that are coming out. And those of you that have shared the testimonies, I pray in the name of Jesus that these things that God has revealed to you or done for you will be sustained in your life in the name of Jesus. And those that are expecting God for miracles and testimonies, I pray that you will step into that season in the mighty name of Jesus. That season of miracles, that season of testimonies, that season where God has changed the narrative of your story let it begin to manifest for some of us God has done it in the realm of the spirit it is waiting to manifest in the physical so may it be manifested in the physical may everything that God has spoken over you in this season be manifested in the name of Jesus Brothers and sisters, when we started the marathon, God gave us seven key things that he was going to be doing in our life. He says it's a fight to regain control over your life. It is a prison break. And the floodgates of 2020 will open. It's a season of restoration. Everything the enemy stole from you in the past, from the month of January to now, God is, is, is restoring. The fifth point was experience the power of prayer. Number six is calling forth the word promise and prophecy for my life and point seven is crowning my year crowning my year 2020 my year of crowning in the name of Jesus today we are going to look at the power of prayer and I think anyone that has come on this journey with us I don't even need to talk about this because you yourself has begun to understand the power of prayer. We have experienced the power of prayer. I don't know. I know I've been a prayerful person, but this season of my life, I have experienced so much power because God has taken my prayer life to a different level. I don't know for you. I believe that nobody has, could say that they've prayed for these hundred days and your life is the same. God has taken us into certain depths and he has taken us to certain heights that I cannot even begin to talk about the power of prayer because God is a powerful God in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to thank you. We want to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us this morning to look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. It says, do not worry about anything. 
Instead, pray about everything. Do not worry about everything anything but instead you must pray about everything tell, tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done the key words that I want us to look at is worry about do not worry about anything but it says pray about everything Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says he says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things will be added unto him he says that we should seek him first the kingdom we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added we should just seek just seek God do not worry about anything and God will bring it unto you. Matthew chapter 6 verse 26 to 27 says, The birds of the earth, they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add a cubit to his own stature? It says the birds of the world, they neither gather, they neither sow, but your father in heaven looks after them. I like that bit. He says, your father. He's your and my father. He looks after the birds. So why should you and I worry? It says, take everything to God in prayer. In worrying, can you increase the number of hair on your head? In a worry, can you increase your stature? In worrying, what can you do? It says, until the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen are watching in vain. Unless the Lord fights for us, we are fighting in vain. There's nothing that you and I can do. And then it says, pray about everything. Prayer has, has an evolving meaning. Prayer is an interaction with God. Committing everything into God in prayer. Prayer is communicating with God. Prayer is being in constant communication with God. Is talking to God. Is listening to God. Is crying unto God. Is being still in His presence. Is walking with Him. Is sharing with Him. All of that is meditating on His word. Is abiding in Him and Him in you. All of that constitutes prayer. Communication with God. Some of the greatest people and the greatest friends and warriors in the Bible, they knew how to communicate with God. They knew how to communicate. They knew how to speak to Him. And I feel that prayer comes in various forms. Prayer can come in the form of crying unto God. Like you see in the, in the case of Hannah, you see in the case of Job, you see in the case of David, Hannah was groaning in the spirit. The Bible says that she and her husband went to wash, went to the to worship at this time again and she was so heartbroken because she'd been begging and asking God for a child and she hadn't had a child and she was groaning in the spirit to the point where the prophet Eli saw her and thought he says this woman must be drunk but then she says I'm not drunk she was groaning in the spirit groaning in the spirit is prayer it's communication with God you see Job for nine months after he lost his children and lost every wealth that he had and began to lose his own skin because the devil afflicted him with all manners of sickness he was talking and communicating with God that is prayer David oh my God that man knew how to sing to God he knew how to pull the heart string of God he knew how to write and communicate with God he knew how to quickly go and repent and all of that constantly Constitute prayer. Prayer involves being the ability to press in. Because in the case of the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed in. She didn't open her mouth. She didn't hear from God. She understood the power of God. And she just pressed in. And she was made whole. Prayer is remaining in the presence. Just there in his stillness with him. Just remaining in the presence of God. Just reminiscing on what God has done. Just going back into the archives. And, and reading about his glory. And reading about his wondrous deeds. Reading about what God has done. And just beginning to imagine and meditate. It is all forms for me. It is prayer wrestling in the realm of the spirit wrestling with God is prayer you see in the case of Jacob he wrestled with God the Bible says that he had an encounter with an angel came and he wrestled with him all night because Joseph understood that something had to break off his life and he understood that something had to change him he understood that his circumstance has to change him and so he wrestled with the man of God and it said to him the, the, the angel said to him what do 
do you want me to do? And he says that I want you to bless me. And he turned around and said, what is your name? He says, my name is Jacob. He says, from this day, you will not be called Jacob again. You will be called Israel because you have you have fought with man and God and you have prevailed. And so prayer is prevailing. Prayer is wrestling in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, Father, we thank you. We see this Jesus, even though he was the son of God, he was constantly in prayer and fasting. He was constantly praying. Every now and then he would step away from his disciples. He would step away from the crowd and go into a quiet place and begin to pray and communicate with his father. We see him at Mount Configuration where he was praying. Elijah was the man of prayer. Elijah was the man of prayer. They all prayed. They all understood the power of prayer. There is power in praying, beloved. I want you to understand there is power. When God asked me to start this marathon, he said there is power in prayer because I need my people to know me. I need my people to know how to communicate with me. And, I, and I, 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 when God told me this, I said, we're going to start it on a small level because not everybody understands fully what prayer is. Not everyone can prevail in prayer. We had to develop prayer muscles. And, and so over the last 96 days, we have been developing prayer muscles. We have been understanding the prayer of the power of prayer we've been understanding what it feels like to groan in the spirit what it feels like to enter into his court and to feel like to be able to enter into the presence of God tell God what you need we've got to tell him what you need in prayer we tell God what we need in prayer we hear what God needs from us also prayer is a time when you can talk to God and he's a God of all sufficiency he's a God that can do anything and because he can do everything he knows it all and Psalm 50 verse 10 to 12 it says the cattle on the thousand hills and, and every animal is God every bird and every creature in the field belongs to God and we go into prayer so we can talk to God and we can talk to God in the name of Jesus and prayer involves faith and prayer involves faith for you to understand the power of prayer you should have faith and it says but with faith without faith it is impossible to please God and for he who comes to God must believe that he is he is he is he is I am the king of kings and he is the lord of lord he is the almighty he is the creator he is the only one anyone that goes to him in prayer must know that he is the rewarder of they that diligently seek him prayer is about seeking God and you and I should seek him to if you want to understand the power of prayer you must be ready to seek him if you want to understand the power of prayer you must believe him if you want to understand the power of prayer you must have faith him if you want to understand the power of prayer you should understand who it is that you were praying to him if you want to understand the power of prayer you need to understand the will of God because you need to begin to ask according to his will you need to ask God for things according to his will we've got to ask God according to his will oh yes according to the will of God if you abide in me and my word abides in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done that is John chapter 15 15 verse 7 if you abide in me and my word abides in you you ask whatever you wish and you it will be done prayer is walking in the will of God but only way I can walk in the will of God is if I'm in prayer and I'm in communication and I am in meditation and I'm walking with God and I begin to understand his ways I begin to understand his plans and his purpose and then I will begin to ask according to his will that way I will understand the power of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. God has given us all will, but we've got to choose the will of God. God is giving us will, but we've got to choose the will of God. The way to the heart of Abba Father is the child that says, Father Lord, you have given me my own free will freely, but I choose to go according to your will. I choose to go according to your will in the name of Jesus. Wherever you go, I will go with you Lord wherever you lead me I will go Lord I align with your word I align with your promise I 
in line with your vision, are in line with your plans for my life. And when God said in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, um, he says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Um, I knew you. I set you apart. Um, God set you apart. Um, God has already said, so if you walk with God, you will begin to understand this. You begin to understand that God knew you. He chose you. He set you apart. Um, you will begin to identify with God's plans and God's will concerning you. And the only way you can begin to do this is if you begin to walk in prayer. If you begin to pray to God and form a relationship with him. If you begin to say, Father, I believe you. I trust you. I surrender to you. You are my life. You are my shield. You are my hope. You are my battle. Your will is my will. And then you begin to communicate with God. You will begin to realize that God will begin to bring revelation. He will bring wisdom. He will bring understanding. He will bring acknowledgement to you. And you will begin to have an understanding of what if you want to understand the power of prayer walk with God. If you want to understand the power of prayer, spend time in his presence. If you want to understand the power of prayer, read his word. If you want to understand the power of prayer, oh, spend time with the king of kings. Pray and you would understand the power of prayer. Ask anything in his name according to his will and he will do it. Form a relationship. Love God. Understand him. Walk with him. Nobody can have a relationship with you or for you when it comes to God. You've got to build that relationship. No pastor, no prophet, no woman of God, no man of God can give you that relationship with God. You've got to form that relationship. And so I encourage somebody that has been following us this time. Don't just pack it all in and say there's no prayer in the morning or DP Global Ministries are not doing the prayers every morning. It was for a season. It was for a season to set you on a path for you to begin to follow that through. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not give up on it. I pray in the name of Jesus that you have developed setting prayer muscles and you will begin to, to walk on this journey and meditate and speak to God and communicate with Him and lie in His presence and reminisce about Him. Take your supplication to Him. We've got to love on God. God sometimes just want you to lie in the stillness in his presence so he can speak to you God he's not loud he's not pushy he wants you to seek him when you seek him you will find he says up until now you have not because you ask not but if you begin to walk with him and you begin to ask he says behold I stand at the door and knock anyone who hears and open I will come in and I will dine with you God desires relationship prayer is about relationship he desires relationship with mankind since Genesis everything that God has done is about relationship and he wants you to be in a relationship with him once you are in a relationship with God beloved you will begin to understand the power of prayer and that is one of the gifts that God is giving us in this season. I pray with you in the mighty name of Jesus that you, yes, you, you, I'm talking to you, that you will not give up on what God has shown you. You will not give up on this journey that God has set you on. And you will not give up because God hasn't given up. He's still where he is when we end the prayer marathon. He's still there every morning. You can shift into it. This journey that you've started on, we have traveled with you for three and a half months please don't pack it in 20, 2021 is around the corner continue to pray and get into the new year continue to pray form a relationship when you've got a friend you want to talk to them at all times when you develop a friendship you want to to to, to invest in that friendship and prayer is investing in in your friendship with Jesus prayer is investing in in what God has said over you what God has done in your life it, prayer is talking to God and sometimes it's not the big eloquent stuff. Prayer is not about how eloquent you are. Prayer is not about how much English you can speak. Prayer is not about the big words and who can hear you say the big words. Prayer is just how, whatever language you've got. He's saying that the people that are deaf and dumb do not pray. It's not about how much we can say. It's not about what you say. God can still hear you. God knows your mind and you know his mind. He understands your heart but you are in him and he is in you. So I'm encouraging someone to pray and understand the power of prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, thank you very much for joining me on this day. We've got another three more days to go. 
I'm getting a little bit sad now because we are coming to an end. Even though I know there's more that God has in store for all of us. And there are more teachings and more prayers that are going to come. But this 100 days, sadly, is coming to an end. And I'm getting a tad bit emotional. But we've got two more days to go. So come invite someone and, and let us fellowship together. Let us pray together. Let us hear from God together. Because I believe that God has a word for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God richly bless you. May he watch over you. May he protect you. And wherever, whatever you do this day, may God be with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.